when I go in, I like to lighten things up a bit. You know, I just show my ID. And you can't see this, but this is my ID. This is this what I show them. Okay. <laughs> no Christian instruction whatsoever. My mum was Jewish. She married a Gentile just after the uh, Second World War. Went to church three times in 22 years as a non-Christian. And uh, each time I was incredibly bored. I'm not exaggerating. I would think to myself, if I can't sleep one night, I'll get a preacher to come and talk to me. I had a very happy childhood. I wasn't molested, wasn't beaten up. I was bullied at one stage, but Looking back, it was incredibly happy. I had my own business, making as much money as I want. I had my own house, my own car, beautiful wife who had made one kid. Total freedom. I didn't have, I was my own boss at 18 or 19 years old. So in my happiness, I had a, a sense of futility. And this is what, this is what came to me at about, about the age of 20. 10 out of 10 die. I began to think about that. And one night I looked at my wife, she'd just gone to sleep, and I thought, she could die in a second, her heart could give out. And all my material things, my house, my business, my freedom, would be futile, it would be empty. No one talked about death, it was like this huge elephant in the room. It's like the whole of humanity is lined up on a cliff. There's a thousand people and they're stepping off this cliff one after the other. And no one's saying, how can we get out of this line? For about six months, I lived in this sense of futility, not outwardly, but just inward thoughts. And I was on a surfing trip and a young Christian guy who didn't really know what he was doing, he'd just become a Christian, explained the gospel to me. He took six and a half hours to lead me to Christ. But I remember reading the Bible verse where Jesus said, you've heard it said by them of old, you shall not commit adultery. And I thought, well, I've never committed adultery. If there's a heaven, I'll probably make it there. And then I read the words, but I say to you, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. And I thought, you're kidding. God sees my thought life. It was like, that was the revelation. I don't think people understand that if God can make a brain, he can see what he's made. I thought, I'm in big trouble on Judgment Day. I'm going I'm to end up in hell. And that's when the cross made sense. I'd heard that Jesus died on a cross. I used to pray to Jesus at night, mention him in my prayers, blah, blah, blah. But it was meaningless until I realized I was a sinner. I needed a savior. I was condemned. And yet because of what Jesus did on the cross, I could be forgiven. I could be exonerated. My death sentence could be commuted because Jesus paid my fine, which means God could legally dismiss my case. And so I, uh, I repented that night, became a Christian, 3.30 in the morning, went outside, looked up at the stars, and everything looked different. Just the, the, the absolute transformation just left me with my mouth wide open. I'd found everlasting life. I witnessed to everybody I met, not in a fanatical, wide-eyed way, but when I met people, I'd, bring, I'd carry tracks everywhere. I got in a box and began preaching in a local city. If anyone could have been considered a fanatic in those days, it was me. One sign you are saved is that Jesus will be your Lord. And when he says, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, you'll do what your Lord commands you to do. You're going along, you know, in life, and suddenly death comes in under the door, takes your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, takes your wife or your husband or your children. It can happen slowly, it can happen instantly. In the next 24 hours, 150,000 people will die. And after death, the judgment of God's going to judge by the holiness of his law. Lust is adultery, hatred is murder, and every time you sin, you store up his wrath, and hell is real, and you're heading there. All liars live apart in the lake of fire. What are you going to do on judgment day? Fortunately, God is rich in mercy and he provided a savior who died for you on the cross, rose again on the third day. And if you repent and trust in him, God will grant you the gift of everlasting life. And he just say, please get right with God today. Don't put it off till tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. You know, I've, 
I've found everlasting life. I cannot but speak that which I've seen and heard.